final day of competition here at the 2020 Mayhem Classic. At the end of the day, someone's going to win $15,000 for the men and the women for winning this whole competition, and someone else is going to walk away with an invite to the CrossFit Games. Sean Woodland and Tommy Marquez here in Cookville, Tennessee. Thanks for spending your Sunday with us, everybody, as we get things kicked off for the women here in event number six. Here's where we stand coming into the competition. Tia Toomey is your overall leader by a wide margin. She has 495 out of a possible 500 points. There's a good battle for second place between Christy O'Connell and Danielle Brandon. Just nine points separates them. Then Fee Sagafi in fourth is your leader in the race for the invite to the CrossFit Games, and she has a 30-point cushion on Allison Stahl. Same movements that we saw for the men, but a little different rep scheme here. Yeah, a little bit less double-unders, 40 double-unders on the Zeus rope for the women. Um, and then instead of two legless rope climbs per round, they're going to alternate two and one, two for the odd, one for the even rounds. Only three men so far have finished this event inside that 14-minute time gap, and Rory McKernan is with the man who did it the fastest, Ben Smith. Ben, so far overall fastest time. Only three men able to finish this thing so far. Does that surprise you? Uh, not with Rich's programming, nah. He does a, he does a good job of, uh, of definitely challenging the athletes in a different way that they're not, haven't been usually challenged in a little while. So I, I enjoyed it. It's a tough workout, tough time cap. Uh, we'll see how the last heat does, but uh, hopefully it holds up. How do you like the programming compared to the other events or just uh, in, you know, uh, as it stacks up in your mind? Uh, I've loved it so far. So um, I've really enjoyed it. I thought it's been really challenging, and uh, it's good, good practice for the games. Yeah. yeah. How is your performance here matching up with what you expected coming into the weekend? Yeah, I mean, performance-wise, I'd like to be sitting a little better, but I'm, you know, I'm coming here to, to check, see where I'm at. Uh, tune up a little bit, get some competition, and hopefully bring my level of training up after competing here. So that's kind of why I come to these things, and this one's been a great one. Based on what you saw with the men, the women are now going to take the field of play. They go two legless rope climbs, then one. You think they're going to have a chance to finish this? Yeah, I think so, for sure. I mean, the, the women are, are just as tough as the dudes. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun to watch. All right, it's fun watching you, buddy. We'll yeah. see you in the next event. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Lane assignments for the first of six women's heats just four athletes uh, in this opening heat and in lane number three one of the youngsters we've been watching here at this competition that's Rebecca Fuselier. Yeah she's got two appearances at the CrossFit Games as a teen athlete um, slowly kind of transitioning over to the individual competition you know maybe hasn't had the best weekend as she might have expected sitting in 24th overall right now but you know she's still got a ton of time to improve at just 19 years old um, and this is another opportunity for her to learn and grow a little bit similar to Cole Grayshaber that we saw uh, for the men in previous seats. Cheyenne Black is right next to her. She is in lane number two. She's looking to move herself into the top 20 after this event. Yeah, and she had her best finish of the weekend, at least close day number two. So she was able to end on a high note yesterday and uh, looking to maybe hopefully parlay that into another strong performance to start day number three. The rep scheme is going to be a little different for the women than it was for the men, and we'll get into that in just a second. But we showed that in the event description that they will alternate between two legless rope climbs and one legless rope climbs on even and odd rounds. Our first heat for the women is underway, and they will begin with 40 double-unders. Those will count for four reps, so one rep for every 10 double-unders, and then one rep for the rope climbs. The odd rounds will have six reps each. The even rounds will have five scored repetitions each, a total of 55 total scored repetitions in this event. Time cap is the same as it was for the men, 14 minutes. So Cheyenne Black on the left of your screen already has stumbled on a couple of double unders here, and now that's the third trip ups that she has had. Not many of these athletes may have dealt with this thicker Zeus rope. Yeah, and you can kind of see already the technique in their jumps. We saw some of the men be a little bit more vertical, less hinged at the hip, less hinged at the knee. Just goes to show that these women are already kind of off their rhythm a little bit with this heavy rope. Serena Ruggiero on the right of your screen in those white and black pants. She was the first woman to complete her first of two rope climbs in this first round. So six total reps here in this first round.
she's already ut utilizing that really big kip swing. That tells me that this is probably not a workout that she's totally comfortable with, so she's trying to use that kip swing early to kind of save her arms uh, over the course of the entire workout. Bailey Maraviglia is also working her way back to the rope as Ruggiero is on to round number two. Five scored repetitions here, so at 11 reps on the throwdown scoring ribbon is when they will be through two total rounds. And kind of one of the difficulties with this heavy rope, we haven't talked about it a ton, but double unders is such a rhythm thing. You find your rope, you find your rope length, um, you know, you get whatever speed rope works best for you, and, and you work yourself into a rhythm over the course of training to where you basically don't really have to think too much. Um, and adding this rope with the heavy handles, the heavy rope, really kind of throws that rhythm off, and it's really kind of a recalibration of sorts for a lot of these athletes to kind of figure out what's going to work best for them. Serena Ruggiero, who is in the lead early here with Bailey Maraviglia on her second round. So just one rope climb she needs to complete here in round two. So she's done now with round two. And she will begin round at number three. Odd numbered rounds have two rope climbs. Even number rounds for the women have just one. Bailey Maraviglia on her rope climb here in round number two. And even with those abbreviated rep, reps, we see that uh, Ruggiero is kind of behind that 10 round pace of about a minute 24 per round. Which I think in these early heats, we're gonna see something similar like we did with the men. You know, some athletes fighting to get as many reps as they can underneath that time cap. We'll start to see him speed up as we go. Ruggiero, just 22 years old, she's out of CrossFit Distinctive Brexville, Ohio. She finished 314th in the World Wide Open. And Cheyenne Black just finishing her second round. Two rope climbs here in round three for Ruggiero at 17 on the throwdown score ribbon. She will be done with round number three. You know, like we talked about, you know, earlier on the men's side of things, this kip swing was popularized by Alessandra Pacelli at the games. And really, it was a technique that was used out of necessity because there was a lack of familiarity with this movement, quite frankly, both in just competition and, for the most part, what athletes did in training. Um, it's since become a, a pretty heavy staple as far as a high skill component for gymnastics now. So we see a lot, of, a lot fewer athletes having to use that. And then more so using the kip swing as kind of like a backup once they get tired. But it's still incredibly efficient. And what you can see is, you know, one of those arms is at full extension the entire time, which basically reduces the tension, the tension entirely, but it puts a little bit more focus on her grip specifically. Ruggiero is now through three of the 10 reps, or rounds, I should say. And Bailey Maraviglia has one more rope climb to go to close out her third round, as does Rebecca Vuselier, she is actually on her first of two rope climbs here in round number three. She is on the bottom left of your screen. Vuselier, just 19 years old, out of CrossFit Bolt in Coppell, Texas. First of two rope climbs in this round are done for Rebecca Fuselier. Bailey Maraviglia is now on her second rope climb in round three. Cheyenne Black also in round three. Ruggiero with one rope climb to close out round four here. 55 total scored repetitions in this event. 14 minute time cap. Eight minutes to go before we hit that. Ruggiero 
is now through four rounds. Back to the rope for round five. It's the first heat of six for the women. And then we'll have the final heat for the men after heat six is done on the women's side. As Ruggiero is back for 40 more double unders here in round number five. Even though she might be a little bit behind that pace of finishing under the, underneath the time cap, the fact that she utilized that kip swing has allowed her to stay pretty steady in her pacing throughout. And at the very least should give her a pretty good score overall, especially if, like the men, we see a lot of women fail to finish. Yeah, only three men were able to finish this event inside that 14-minute time cap. Saxon Panchik, Connor Duddy, and then Ben Smith who still has the top time for the men. As Smith turned in a time of 12.39.57 seconds, but he has to wait a while to see if anybody can beat that in the final men's heat. And Serena Ruggiero is now staring at two rogue climbs to close out round number five. So far, she's been perfect on all these rope climbs, has yet to fail a rep, but is taking significant rest between each one. Second rope climb in round five for Ruggiero. And Serena Ruggiero is now through five rounds. Back to the rope to begin round six. 40 double unders. Bailey Maraviglia in the black pants was battling Ruggiero for the lead early, but she has fallen off the lead pace. Cheyenne Black, meanwhile, is still in round three. Rebecca Fuselier just finished round number four. She's in the black pants in the middle of the screen walking back to her rope. Here's Cheyenne Black. Trying to get through her third round. She's got to get this rep in order to do it. You notice how even with the kip swing, she's still kind of keeping her arms bent? There's a lot a lot of kind of wasted energy there when you're really trying to utilize that kip swing and you still allow your arms to be bent because you're still under tension there. Cheyenne Black is now stuck on this 17th scored rep, her second rope climb here in round three. That's her third straight fail, and you've mentioned this before. I mean, there's nothing you can do when that starts to happen other than rest. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's e even then, like, when you have to eventually decide to go back up, I mean, we're see you saw it here, the difference between a good rep and a missed rep in this instance and how it plays out is, you know, maybe a foot. And it's really hard once you hit that red line to determine, well, how many more seconds do I need to basically make up that extra foot? Um, and it, it's, it's a really tough game to play, and it's heartbreaking to see it play out on the floor. But it's the nature of this movement, and it's... Three and a half minutes to go before we hit the 14 minute time cap and Serena Ruggiero is still your leader in this heat. She is through six total rounds and now beginning round number seven. 55 total scored repetitions in this event. You know, obviously Serena is not in a contention for one of the top spots, but, you know, at this point of the competition, you're just looking for a few bright spots. And 
this finish, at least so far how it's played out, is going to give her a boost relative to her peers on the competition floor. You know, she's in, she's tied for 26. She's tied in points with Bailey Maraviglia. Cheyenne Black is the, the highest ranked athlete on the floor. She's 15 points ahead of Bailey, assuming that some of these later heats are going to do well. Is, and the more ground that Serena chews up through the rest of this workout is just going to give her a little bit more of a points boost. At the end of the day, you're just trying to chew up as many points as possible, get as high as possible, and then take that home and adjust your training. Ruggiero has two rope climbs remaining here in round number seven. Two minutes left in the event. Ruggiero clearly moving at the right pace here. Obviously not fast enough to get her inside the time cap, but she is in the lead here in this heat and has yet to fail a rope climb. Here goes Rebecca Fuselier as she will now try to close out round number five. Cheyenne Black is also making another ascent and she is getting preciously close or perilously close now to that. And she will get it. So Cheyenne Black took the right amount of rest and she is now through three rounds. And Serena unfor unfortunately just failed her very first rope climb which would have got her through eight rounds. And really, there's no way to strategize around this because, again, when it goes away, it goes away. And, and Yeah, and, and honestly, that's the type of work that has to be done in training, right? You know, that, that just goes back to how you prepare for this type of movement in your everyday training. Um, kind of knowing your limits and figuring out your limits for a movement like this um, is something you have to do in the hours in the gym um, to kind of understand what your threshold is. Because if you're testing your threshold, or at least you're kind of riding that dangerous line here, it's usually not going to work out for you. So Ruggiero gets us. She'll be through seven rounds. She's got 10 seconds. And she will hit that. It doesn't look like she's going to have enough time to get back to the jump rope. So 39 repetitions for Ser Serena Ruggiero as she now has the top score after the opening heat. So 39 of the 55 reps. Cheyenne Black shining her scorecard. And even though she wasn't able to finish underneath the time cap, far and away, Serena Ruggiero had the best performance of the heat. A strong performance that she should be proud of. And it was this pace on the rope climbs that really separated her from everybody else. Yeah, and you could tell right away that, you know, compared to some of the other athletes, she had a very clear plan. Using that kip swing from the outset, um, and for the most part, it kept her solid in her pace. She only failed one rope climb, and it came in the final two minutes, which means pacing-wise, she was pretty on point with, you know, making sure that she didn't get close to that red line till the end. And in the very least, it gets her a heat win right now. Serena Ruggiero with 39 repetitions out of the 55. She edges out Rebecca Fuselier by seven. Bailey Maraviglia takes third, and it's Cheyenne Black, who was able to gut through her third round for 20 total repetitions. Five heats remain here in women's event number six. And it is the same two movements that we've been seeing throughout the morning here. It's the legless rope climbs and the double unders. A little bit of a different rep scheme for the women than the men as they have two legless rope climbs in the odd rounds and one legless rope climb uh, in the even rounds. It looks simple. Why is this so hard? You know, obviously le legless rope climbs are a higher skill component as far as, you know, the body weight and gymnastics type stuff go. But I think you, you kind of couple into fact the total fatigue that they have over the weekend you know they had a pretty stout day yesterday um the bar muscle ups obviously affect some similar muscle groups in terms of the upper body pull and the grip and then you couple in something like a heavy rope climb which we're seeing actually kind of uh, sorry a heavy double under which actually kind of has an effect 
I mentioned the rhythm component. Now these athletes are actually forced to actively engage that rope in terms of pulling it through to make sure their rhythm and cadence stays up to point. And that's just more interference in terms of taxing the shoulders and taxing the grip. Um, and we're seeing it start to kind of wear on them, especially as we get into the later half of these rounds. Four athletes in this second of six heats. And Paige Powers, the 17-year-old, She's another youngster who has been very impressive here. So had some solid performances on day two. Yeah, I mean, she's been one of the athletes that really kind of stood out towards the middle part of yesterday. A fifth place finish to start on event three yesterday. A fourth place finish um, right right after that. But then she's had a couple of seesaw. Uh, she's had three events in the bottom five. So really kind of back and forth. Like I said, feast or famine for this athlete. But she's still very young. A lot of time to improve. 39 of the 55 scored repetitions. That is the top score from Serena Ruggiero in heat number one. And we talk about these youngsters, and it, well, that's one of the good things about this new structure is that it's much easier for them to get experience not only on a big stage but against top athletes than it was possibly in the past. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, no doubt. And, I mean, just the sheer number of competitive opportunities that now 28 sanctionals provide you know, there are a handful of sanctionals that do do a teenage competition. But besides that, because of how spread out the talent pool is amongst these events, you know, you do have some, some teenage athletes being able to compete in these elite divisions. And not just that, we're actually seeing, and I think this is a little bit more unique to the, to the women's side, we're seeing some teenage athletes be competitive on the elite individual side, whether it's here or whether it's in the open, when we see some athletes like Emmy, Emma Carey, Olivia Sulik, you know, finish in the top 75 worldwide in the open and nearly earn a qualification spot. Haley Adams did it a few years back, qualifying for regionals when she was still in the teenage competition, and then finished in the top 10 in, in the games and basically her first year as an individual. Nicole Chauvin is your early leader. Six scored repetitions in the odd rounds, five in the even, and she is through her first of two rope climbs here in round number one. But Evie Hollis will be the first woman done with round number one, and she works her way back to the jump rope. She's from across the Atlantic, from CrossFit JST in Lancaster. Nicole Chauvin got out early, and she is done with her first round and has just made her way back to the jump rope. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned earlier yesterday I got to w watch Nicole compete at the Reykjavik CrossFit Championship where she was doing really well, then an unfortunate kind of slip up in, in one of the max lifting events. She had a pretty severe ankle sprain and foot injury. Um, which is one of those things that's kind of tough to, to get over. It's one of those nagging injuries. So to see her back on the competition floor and the elite individuals, it, it's good to see. She still managed to finish seventh at, in Reykjavik that year. Um, but also, this is an she's an athlete that was just one spot away from qualifying a few years back in the Central Regional back in 26, 2016. And one of those uh, kind of weekends that was really back and forth, we saw three or four athletes in the hunt by weekend's end. Evie Hollis, Chauvin, Paige Powers, and Ashley Schaefer basically all on the same pace here as all of them are in round two. Evie Hollis is the first woman to the rope, just one rope climb here in the even round, and Hollis knocks that out easily, and she will now return to the jump rope to begin round number three. Ashley Schaefer making her ascent on the right of your screen. And now going to the kip, Nicole Chauvin working her way up. And her first rope climb, and only rope climb here in round number two, is done. So Ashley Schaefer, it looks like she's nursing some sort of ankle injury. She's been jumping rope on one foot. So keeping her right foot aloft and still able to do double unders basically by pushing off of her left. And it and you can see the kind of sleeve on her right knee there. It kind of tells me maybe there's something wrong with the knee. We, we did a lot of kind of single leg work yesterday. Obviously, we, we finished with the lunges. Maybe something happened there that, you know, over the course of the evening kind of flared up. Um, obviously, she's trying to protect it. It's a, kind of an unfortunate situation. You can see it's clearly bothering her. Similar to Paige Henry yesterday and trying to grit through it. You know, it's admirable, but, you know, we hope she's making sure she takes care of herself because... Health is more important at this point. She's using that heavy rope, and she's still able to get 
reps strung together on double unders. That's, that's incredible. The fact that she still has a wherewithal to do that while dealing with what is clearly a bad right leg. Now, Evie Hollis has made her way back to the rope. Two rope climbs here for her to complete round three. And she is in the lead now as she will try to track down the top score that was put up by Serena Ruggiero in the last heat of 39 scored reps, the 55 total scored repetitions in this event. The double unders, they get one rep for every 10 they complete. 40 double unders in each round. As Ashley Schaefer chalking up her hands as she continues to make progress here as Evie Hollis, though, is fighting with Nicole Chauvin for the lead. Now Hollis is done with round three. Schaefer making her way up. Schaefer is an unaffiliated athlete. She trains out of San Antonio, Texas. She's 34 years old, literally twice the age of Paige Powers. <laughs> Man, really highlights kind of the scope and spread of the athletes here in the individual competition. And really, it's a testament to the training methodology, right? That you're seeing athletes basically from different generations, you know, finding kind of peak fitness across their lifetime. Paige Powers has one rope climb to go, and she will be three through three rounds. And she's going with that kip as well. The Evie Hollis, she just finished up her fourth round of double unders, and she is moving back to the rope. She'll only have to complete one rope climb in this round as Paige Powers is done with round number three. And you can see Paige at full extension there utilizing the kip. The one thing that really, really does is puts a ton of tension on your hand specifically, right? Because you've basically negated the, your biceps and your back from being able to take some of the tension off, and everything's basically dead weight hanging on those hands. So if you're gonna do that and be successful, you have to be confident in your grip. Evie Hollis back to the rope along with Nicole Chauvin. The two of them in their fifth rounds. Nicole Chauvin trying to join her counterpart at the game. She's actually engaged to the national champion, now two-time champion, uh, national champion of Kenya, Jeremy McGinney. The Chauvin has taken the lead as she is to the rope for her one rope climb here in round number four. Halfway through the event, 14-minute time cap. And I like that she's using her legs on the descent, right? Take a little bit of tension off the arms on the way down. I mean, the rep's done at that point for a lot of these athletes. Why go through that negative portion if you don't have to? Especially given how much fatigue your upper body is already under during this workout. So Evie Hollis is in round number five. She has two rope climbs. As Nicole Chauvin has just started round number five. Hollis is on the right, Chauvin on the left. Hollis finished 102nd in the World Wide Open. And especially with some of the higher round workouts like this, I think some of the more experienced athletes might have kind of a, a few checkpoints in mind. Um, at least I know, you know, seeing some athletes in similar workouts in the past, they'll, they'll kind of kind of write out their pacings or have, you know, hey, every two rounds I want to be about this time. Um, at the very least, to kind of have a checkpoint on the clock to kind of keep them honest and keep them on their pace. Chauvin with about 10 double unders to go before she will join Hollis at the rope. Hollis's final rope climb here in round five. And you can see before that, Hollis was watching the clock pretty intently. I think as far as, you know, these legless rope climbs go, she's maybe sticking to either, either she's looking at the clock or she's looking at her coach. Either way, she's kind of sticking to a set amount of rest between reps. Hollis into round number six as Nicole Chauvin has two rope climbs left in round number five. She's using more of a kind of bicycle kick with each leg, kind of driving the, those 
each one of those legs up individually to kind of give her a little bit of boost for the regrip. Interesting though, on the way down, she was using kind of a figure four lock to grasp on the rope to lower herself down. You're a fan of figure four lock, Sean. It's a devastating move, Tommy. <laughs> Not to be trifled with. Chauvin for her second rope climb here in round number five. But look at look at that. Very interesting kind of lock there with the legs. Don't really see that. Now, Evie Hollis is through 32 of the 55 total scored repetitions, so she has one rope climb remaining here to finish up round number five. We have four minutes remaining before we hit that 14-minute time cap. But Evie Hollis comes in in 22nd place. Overall, her best finish was a tie for 15th. She did that yesterday uh, in event five. So Hollis into round number six. Chauvin still on round five. Evie Hollis had the lead early here. She's in round seven, pardon me. Less than three minutes to go. She's held this pace pretty much throughout the entire event. I remember Serena Ruggiero in the last, last heat, she got through 39 reps. That's eight rounds. That's eight rounds, and so she's got about two and a half minutes to get through these rope climbs. The Paige get through Powers round. just completed round number five. Hollis is now through seven rounds with one more rope climb. Remember, it's two legless rope climbs on the odd rounds and one on the even. So Hollis has one remaining here in round number seven. With about two minutes to go here. Nicole Chauvin, she is also in round seven, but now on her double unders. Second rope climb for Hollis. She's still looking strong, able to kind of keep that nice compact position on the legless rope climbs. And she has already tied Serena Ruggiero for the top score, and now Evie Hollis, with every rep that she racks up here, will set the new mark to beat. A minute and a half before we hit the time cap. Hollis threw 40 of the 55 total scored reps. She is in round eight of 10. And just from posture-wise, posture Evie Hollis doesn't look that tired. With about a minute 10 left, I'm surprised she's not maybe pushing the pace there. She already is breaking up her double unders again into sets of 10. One minute to go before we hit the time cap. Nicole Chauvin on the left of your screen has two rope climbs to go. Now one before she's through seven rounds. Evie Hollis is your event leader through 43 of the 55 total scored repetitions. And I know Evie Hollis has been kind of taking calculated rest here, but you've got 30 seconds left and one rope climb in this round. I mean, if you want to take a chance, this is the time to take a chance and maybe jump up right away and test it because her rope climbs have looked great so far. And she can knock out a significant amount of reps if she can get herself back to the rope. Mm -hmm. So 20 seconds to go, go Nicole Chauvin. Trying to get through round number seven. Evie Hollis is back on the rope. She is in round nine now. One scored rep for every 10 double unders, and she's just trying to knock out as many as she can. We hit the time cap. So unofficially, 
she will have 45 total repetitions here. And she is your new event leader. Strong performance from Evie Hollis, really consistent on the legless rope climb. She took some strategic breaks as we saw some other athletes who were successful on the men's side do um, in the jump rope. And then by the end, she was pretty much on her own, almost around over the rest of her competitors. And she gets a, a heat win and sets the new time to beat, or at least the new rep to beat. So Evie Hollis gets through 45 of the 55 scored repetitions. Nicole Chauvin, who was on that lead pace for a little while, manages to get through 38. Paige Powers, a respectable performance with 33. And Ashley Schaefer takes fourth, but impressive performance from her considering she basically did that on one leg. Day three of competition is well underway here now as we move on to the third of six heats for the women, event number six, powered by Reebok. 40 double unders for the women, and then they alternate the amount of rope climbs they do between the odd and the even rounds. And it really, again, is the rope climbs that are making the huge difference in this event. Yeah, and we're seeing some athletes really start to struggle with them, especially as they get into the later rounds. I think for some of these athletes, maybe if you're not confident that you're going to get through it, given the fact that no one's finished it, maybe kind of set your sights on that 9 and 10 rounds and uh, maybe kind of pace it out for a certain amount of time just to make sure you get to those rounds. And then at that point, you're basically playing with house money. Hillary Steele in lane two, she is one of the shorter athletes, but she has a ton of gymnastics experience. Yeah, she was actually a national level, gym, actually an international level uh, gymnast. Um, she got a full ride scholarship to the University of Georgia for gymnastics. Has competed with Team USC, USA on the international level. Extremely accomplished in the floor routine, as which we saw kind of saw her uh, flex her gymnastics skills in the handstand walk just the other day. Also helps that she's one of the lighter athletes in the field to kind of manhandle some of these legless rope climbs, but we could see her struggle maybe a little bit with that heavy rope. Nikki Matarazzo is in lane number four. She's out of Ontario, Canada, two-time regionals athlete, uh, once as a team on a team and once as an individual. Best finish of the regionals, 26 as an individual in 2018. That was in the East. And her, and her best finish came on day one when she finished the... I guess the entirety of that ruck in 10th place. Um, heat three of six underway through two heats. No woman has been able to complete all the work inside the 14 minute time cap. Round one begins with 40 double unders and two legless rope climbs. 45 of the 55 scored repetitions is the mark to beat Evie Hollis just did that in the prior heat. And we've seen that basically all of the athletes take a break already in that first portion of the double unders. Hillary Steele, Erickson, Matarazzo, Connors is the last woman on the double unders. Hillary Steele hustling to the rope. She's on the bottom left of your screen. Two rope climbs here in round number one. I love that. Basically every workout we've seen thus far, we've seen Hillary Steele sprint through the transitions. First rope climb down for Hillary Steele. Six scored reps here in round number one. Steele back up for her second of two attempts. Round one is done for Hillary Steele. And she will be the first woman back to the double unders. She and now Carolyn Connors at the other end of the floor are through their two rope climbs. Right on that pace at about 124 per round, which is what you need to get underneath the time cap. Even if she can't hold on to that, it set her up nicely to maybe kind of set the new score to beat. We haven't really talked about it much either, but also remember as you get further along in the workout, the transition to the rope gets, gets shorter. Granted, it's only, you know, an extra 15, 20 feet at a time. But over the course of 10 rounds, it adds up, especially when you're coming down to people that, to athletes that aren't finishing under the time cap where every rep matters. 
Hillary Steele is done with her 40 double unders here in round two. She only has one rope climb to compete, complete. So at 11 scored repetitions on the throwdown scoring ribbon, she will be through round two. A little bit of a veteran move there. She had a little bit of chalk tucked into her waistband. And Carolyn Connors to work first before Steele, and now Connors in the lead as Steele will complete her rope climb in round two, and the two of them back to the jump rope for round three. Connors on the right of your screen in the green top. She will start her third set of double unders first. Top two right now in this heat. Carolyn Connors on the right and then Hillary Steele on the left. Connors coming in in 17th place overall. Best finish in ninth place finish in event number nine. Also the best event finish for Hillary Steele who is in 15th place overall. Steele finished sixth in event number three. That was that handstand walk where you remember she came out firing. She was sprinting on her hands. Two rope climbs here in round number three as Hillary Steele is done first. Carolyn Connors taking a second to situate her rope and chalk up her hands before she makes the trip back for that 15-foot rope climb. And here she comes, and Connors will jump right up. And Hillary Steele has yet to start. And Connors is through one. Here's Steele's first attempt here in round number three. Both Steele and Connors through one of two rope climbs in round three. Connors will make that, and she will return to the jump rope to begin round at number four. More than four and a half minutes gone by here. 14 minute time cap. This is the third of six heats for the women, and no woman has been able to complete this event inside the 14-minute time cap as of yet. Evie Hollis came the closest. She got 45 of the 55 total scored reps. Now Hillary Steele completing her second rope climb here in round number three. Carolyn Connors on the right of your screen is already working on her double unders in round number four. She has 10 more remaining and then one rope climb. You see how far forward Hillary Steele's hands are here. You know, typically you see as people start to get fatigued on double unders, their hands start to wander a little bit. For Hillary, she's moving a lot more forward, trying to get a little bit more whip out in front of her with that heavy rope climb to get a little bit more action on it. That's also going to fatigue the, the shoulders a little bit more. The further your hands are away from the center of mass, the more, the more fatigue it puts on those shoulders. Connor's making her only ascent that she needs to make here in round four, and she will make that. So she's on to round number five. Six minutes gone by, eight minutes remaining. Hillary Steele making her way to the rope. One rope climb for her to finish up round four. Strong showing from Connor so far. She only competed at one sanctional event last year. That was in Brazil. She finished 10th. You know, a couple of strong performances here. Right now she's in seventh. Maybe kind of get within earshot of that top 10. There is prize money available for all the top 10 spots. $15,000 of the winner, 10,000 for second, and 5,000 for third. But if you finish in the top 10, you're walking home with some cash. Hillary Steele will get up to the top of that rope, and she is now done with four rounds, trying to catch up to Carolyn Connors, who is back on the jump rope in round number five. So Bridget Erickson in the green shirt in the middle of the screen looks to be struggling on her rope climbs. Erickson is in round number three. You 
know, we're past the halfway mark as far as time's concerned, and the, none of these athletes are at the halfway mark as t in terms of reps. So again, it looks like we might not have someone finish here, but in the very least, they're still within shot of potentially setting the new, the new score to beat. First rope climb in round five for Carolyn Connors. One to go for her. And she'll move on to round number six. She's starting to put some distance between herself and Hillary Steele. Steele is still on her double unders right now in this fifth round. Here's Connor's second rope climb. Connors continues to be perfect on the rope, and she is through five rounds. Back to the rope for 40 double unders in round number six. When she hits 33, she'll be on to round seven. One rep for every 10 double unders. Connors took 69th in the World Wide Open, so not enough to get herself inside the cut line and earn a qualifying spot in the CrossFit Games. It's still an impressive performance in the, in the Open. I think with this kind of uh, new system, especially with how spots of the games are handed out, I think a top 100 performance, in my opinion, uh, in the open still carries a lot of weight just because of the increased emphasis on performance, specifically from the upper echelon athletes in terms of using the open to get a qualifying spot. Hillary Steele just completed her first rope climb in round number five. As Carolyn Connors has one rope climb remaining to complete round six. Top score still belongs to Evie Hollis. 45 of the 55 total scored repetitions for Evie Hollis, and she did that in the prior heat. And now a no rep for Carolyn Connors. Looks like she argued it for a second. And she was definitely high enough. I think it might have been a matter of actually touching it because her, her hand was more than high enough. And it may, she may have actually touched it, but it was really kind of hard to see because she was a little off balance, wasn't able to actually get her hand on the rope to grasp. So Connors may have gotten back up there a little too quickly because she's going to struggle, and that's a no rep. Hillary Steele is moving back to the double unders. She is now in round six. Connors on her final rope climb in round six. So that no rep, the first one, very costly for her. And then she wasted the energy jumping up for the second one and not able to get to the top. And that's just a little bit of compounding fatigue there. You know, you jump up a little bit too soon, a lot of wasted energy. She was cruising. And she is clearly not happy about the no rep that she received, but she's got to shake this thing off and get back up there. It doesn't matter. She's not going to win the argument right now. She's got to complete the work. Exactly. You know, you know, obviously there's time to appeal things later, but you still have a workout you have to execute on. Connors makes the touch, and that rep will count. She is now through six rounds. Less than three minutes to go before we hit the 14-minute time cap, and Connors is now on to her seventh round of double-unders. She's still within striking distance of the top score of 45. 55 total scored repetitions in this event. No one's finished inside the 14-minute time cap. Connors and Hillary Steele are your top two. And Nikki Matarazzo is one rep shy of getting through five rounds. And then Bridget Erickson is still 
trying to complete her second of two rope climbs in round three. She is in the green shirt as Bridget Erickson in the middle of your screen. A kind of big picture score for Carolyn Connors. That, that round and that no rope is particularly tough because that's a round where she only has one. Um, and it's supposed to be, you know, quote unquote, one of the easier rounds for these athletes to kind of combat a little bit of the fa that fatigue and pile up some extra reps. But instead of doing one, she ends up doing three, and then she has to come back and do two this round. For 90 seconds, Carolyn Connors is on her final two reps to close out round number seven. So she may not be able to catch Evie Hollis. And again, that no rep, the two no reps that she got in round number six were extremely costly. And we saw her kind of squatting down to kind of stretch out her forearms a little bit, stretch out the hands, especially with the grip here, the, the kind of particular muscle that starts to tighten up is your forearms. So she was kind of folding the hands back a little bit to kind of stretch those forearms and hopefully kind of reduce some of the fatigue. So one is down for Connors, and she made it very clear that she was touching the white tape. Hillary Steele also has two rope climbs remaining now in round seven, 30 seconds. I think that there's a little bit of a lesson here, too, because even though she got the tough no rep, there's still you still have to, like you said, finish the workout, and she jumped up sooner than she needed to. And, and it's almost one of those things where, yeah, even if it, if you get a tough call, there's no excuse to kind of let that get to your head and take you out of your game mentally to kind of hastily jump up the rope. Connors gets credit for that and is not going to be able to get any additional double unders. But Evie Hall is still with the top time, top score of 45 out of the 55 scored repetitions. So Carolyn Connors was looking really good had a good pace going, and then runs into the no rep and clearly got her off her game. Yeah, you know, it's unfortunate. She was looking like she might be able to push for the top score. One no rep, she immediately jumps back up on the rope. It's a second no rep. It starts to compound that fatigue a little bit. There's that no rep. You can see she couldn't quite grasp the, the rope to kind of show no doubt like she had in previous rounds. She jumps up too soon, fails a second rep in a round where she only has to do one really kind of knocked her off her game from there. She started to struggle a little bit more, and especially in the back half of this workout, when the fatigue is high and the arms are just smoked, you don't want to do more work than you need to. Connors with 39 of the 55 score repetitions completed. Hillary Steele started to catch up there at the end. She'll get through 37. Uh, Matarazzo will take third, and Bridget Erickson is not able to get out of round number three. Event six. Just those two movements, it's the legless rope climbs and the double unders, 40 double unders for the women, and then alternating between two reps in the odd rounds on the legless rope climb, and then one rep uh, in the even round. You mentioned that jump rope that these athletes are using. It is not your usual jump rope, and for more on that, let's go down to Rory McKernan. Sean, Tommy, I was actually speaking to a couple of the male athletes behind the scenes, trying to get to the bottom of what actually is being fatigued. I know that we assumed it was only grip, but I heard from Saxon Panchik and Tolo Moraquino, there's actually more about the shoulders and the, even the biceps. One interesting piece of input from Tolo Moraquino that I did not see coming is that he's got a lot of experience with these. The mistake that he made, he said, is that sometimes he'll go from an external position to actually with this heavier rope, you can turn your rope in. So we'll see if any of the ladies crack the code or if any of the men from the final heats maybe utilize that little trick that uh, could help them get through those double unders a little bit more smoothly. Thank you, Roe. Fourth of six heats for the women. Just four athletes. And keep an eye on lane number three, Alexis Detroit out of Oakland, California. Yeah, she's, a, you know, out of close to our hometown in our backyard. I actually had a chance to uh, catch up with Alexis a little bit earlier this morning, uh, talking about the weekend um, and what's left in store. She said she was really excited about these workouts. She likes the legless rope climbs. She likes double unders. She's kind of a bouncy athlete in that regard, and she's really hoping to kind of make a push up in this particular workout. Still no woman has been able to complete this event inside the 14 minute time cap. Vera Koskalainen, who at one point held the invitation to the CrossFit Games, trying to regain that here. 
The fourth of six heats is underway. You start with those 40 double unders on the heavy rope that Roy McKernan just told you about. One scored repetition for every 10 double unders. At the four rep mark, they will proceed to the rope and complete two legless rope climbs here in the first odd round. And Alexa Detois is the first one done. And now Sarah Vietz right behind her. Really smooth on the rope climb for that first rep for Alexis. Good upper body position. Using that bicycle kick really efficiently. And Alexis Detois is done with round number one. Back to the rope for 40 more double unders and then one rope climb here in the second round. And actually, so far, that is the fastest round one that we've seen from all of the heats of women. Detois right back to work on her second round of 40 double unders, Sarah Vietz. The tallest athlete on the field, she's on the right of your screen, is back to the rope. And Marie Pierre Bonneau is on to her second set of double unders as well. And Detois choosing to break these up pretty early here. Beats had her best finish of the, uh, the weekend to close out last night, a seventh place finish in that sandbag lunge event. Had the chance to compete alongside Beats at the Iron Games in Utah, where she was the individual champion, and I was just a regular old <laughs> member of the Team of Three competition. I was in the fun division. You were in the fun division with the with our friends, the Buttery Bros. Ran into a little trouble on the worm, though, I think. Yeah, let's let's just let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Alexa Detois on her first and only row climb here in round number two. 55 total scored repetitions in this event. 45 is the best score we've seen so far. It belongs to Evie Hollis, who did that in heat number two. And you can see uh, Sarah Vietz already looking at her hands there. Not a good sign this early in the workout, especially on that last few feet. She was struggling to grip the rope. Let's just say the, the grip portion of this workout isn't going to get any easier from there. So Alexis Detois is now on round number three. And breaking up her double unders again here. Detois, Vietz, and Bonneau all in round three. Vera Koskalainen is still in round number two. She's on the left side. Out of Helsinki, Finland. And at one point early in the competition again, she had that invite to the CrossFit Games and has since fallen down the standings, now sits in 11th place overall, but the weekend started very well for her on day one. She had a sixth and then a fourth, followed that up with an 11th in event three, but then has tailed off since then. Uh, event five, she finished 22nd. And even after uh, even after event four, where she took a 16th and you could see the decline start to happen, she was still within the hunt. She was within earshot of Amanda Hardiman. Um, as well as Fisa Goffin, but then that 22nd, like you mentioned, to close out last night, that really dropped her down the leaderboard and essentially kind of knocked her out of contention. Alexis Detois has one rope climb remaining here in round three. Two rope climbs in the odd rounds, one rope climb in the even rounds. 40 double unders in every round. Detois is done. And she will begin round number four. Rira Koskalainen now coming back to her jump rope as she will begin round number three. So Detois starting to open up a lead here as Vietz and Bonneau are taking a good amount of rest between their two rope climbs here in their third rounds. And keep your eye on the clock here. 540 is the kind of checkpoint for this round to make sure you're still on pace to potentially get underneath the time cap, especially in these even rounds. It's a little bit more accurate, right? Because that's once once the workout actually kind of 
squares off between the, the two rep rope climb rounds and the one rep rope climb round. Detroit is done with her double unders in round four, and she will only have one rope climb to complete before she gets back to the jump rope to begin round number five. Bono and the green top and Veets on the right are fighting for second place in this heat. 45 total scored repetitions is the score to beat. Again, Evie Hollis did that in heat number two, and it has lasted so far as Detois makes the touch, and she is done with four rounds. And that's the first little blip in terms of her technique that we've seen thus far, at least through the first three rounds, no problem whatsoever. We saw her start to kind of struggle with the grip there a little bit at the top of the rep. Sarah Veets, bottom right, is moving to the rope to close out round number four. And Marie Pierre Bonneau in the green is also joining her. But Alexis Detois in the middle of your screen on her double unders is starting to really pull away from the field here. And this round five has really kind of been the roadblock round for a lot of athletes in the in the previous heats. Right about now is when the, the kind of inescapable fatigue starts to pour on pretty heavy. We see a lot of athletes get stuck in rounds four through six. Detois has 10 double unders remaining here in round number five, and then she will have to complete two rope climbs. So all of these athletes are trying to earn an invite here. Vera Koskalainen is the closest. She has 284 points, but she's essentially going to have to win out here in order to have a re realistic chance of moving into contention for that spot and then have to get a whole lot of help in the process. And it doesn't help that there's a, a certain woman at the top here that basically makes winning out <laughs> nearly impossible. Pretty much impossible. That's Tia Toomey, who has won four of five events, has 495 out of a possible 500 points, as Alexis Detois is done with her first rope climb here in round at number five. Vera Koskalainen needs to complete this rope climb to get through round number three. Six minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Alexis Etoile, the leader right now in this fourth of six heats. Detroit makes the touch, and she is now on to round number six. Marie-Pierre Bonneau just completed her first of two rope climbs in round five, but it's Alexis Detroit, who is your leader, starting her double unders in round number six and inching closer to the top score that belongs to Evie Hollis of 45 reps. Marie-Pierre Bonneau with one rope climb to go here. And she'll be through five rounds. Here's her second attempt. And looking like the grip is starting to fail her as she kips at the top, but she is able to make contact with that white tape. So Bono is done with round five. Alexis Detroit is working away on round number six. But credit to her to be able to make that adjustment on the fly when you're, you know, 14 feet in the air. To know that even fatigue, you can switch to that kip technique just to make sure you get the rep. We saw Alexis in her last rope climb as well. When she gets to about 14 feet, and then she gives one big kip swing to make sure she gets the rep. Just one rope climb here for Detroit in round number six. We are almost to the 10 minute mark, just four minutes remaining until the time cap. It's funny, I was talking to Alexis this morning and she said that it was 
very unusual for her to, you know, sleep until till six this morning <laughs> before she actually had to get up and get ready to go to go work out. Because typically with the schedule we've mentioned before that she has to keep, she's up at like three, three thirty in the morning so she can train before work. Six rounds done for Alexis De Trois. She is way out in front here. Marie Pierre Bonneau is the next closest athlete. She's right next to Alexis De Trois, but she still has not closed out her double unders in round five yet. To make that round six as Alexis De Trois is in round number seven. Bono with her initial ascent in round number six. Just one rope climb in the even rounds, two in the odd, and now a no rep for Bono as her judge saying you did not get to the top. Detroit bottom left, continuing to work through her double unders in round number seven. There goes Sarah Vietz. Vietz is trying to finish up round number five. And we saw Beats just kind of swinging her arms out, just trying to do anything she can to kind of get the blood and the swelling in her arms out to kind of fight some of that fatigue. And Beats is through. She will move on to round number six. Alexis Detroit chalking up for two rope climbs here in round seven. And these next two rope climbs for Detroit, I think, are really going to be the crux of where she ends up finishing on the leaderboard. This is about when we saw the other top athletes either, or at least the heat leaders, either kind of catapult themselves into a top score by getting through these two quickly, or where we saw a couple of no reps start to pile up. Because remember, the next round, she only has one. First attempt here for Detroit in round seven. One rope climb remains for her, and she'll move on to round number eight. 45 is the top score. Remember, one rep for every 10 double unders. 90 seconds to go for Detroit. Continues to chalk her hands. You can see her with a considerable amount of tape on her fingers. After all the work that she's done this weekend, bar muscle up, some of the pulling from the floor, trying to protect a few of those, what we call them, hot spots. Detroit has yet to miss a rope climb here. And getting close to the top, but the grip looking like it's starting to slip. Detroit is going to get credit for that. And she will move on to round number eight. I mean, that was huge for her. If she, if she doesn't get that rep, that's basically the end of her workout there. The amount of time that it would take at this point of the workout to try and get that rep again, there's just not enough time. So Detroit is just going to try to knock out as many double unders as she can here in round eight as Sarah Vietz is trying to get through round number six. And that rep will do it for her. And now 20 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. Alexis Detroit threw 41 of the 55 scored reps. You don't got time to rest here. You got to go. Five seconds to go, and that's going to do it. So Evie Hall is still with the top mark at 45 of the 55 scored repetitions, and no woman has been able to finish this event inside that 14-minute time cap. But a heat win for the woman from Oakland, California, Alexis Detroit. <laughs> and... She did take some breaks in those double unders, but that seems to be the strategy because the women who are doing that are able to stay consistent on the rope. She didn't miss a single rep there. She didn't, and she got eerily close, but it just goes to show how, I guess, how well she paced herself for this workout that she didn't really struggle with a single rope climb until the very last one of the workout. You know, she did take some breaks early on, but I would have liked to see her maybe try to go for un as unbroken or maybe try to go to failure on that last set of double unders. Alexis Detroit threw 42 of the 55 scored repetitions to win heat number four. Marie Pierre Bonneau, who was in the lead pace early in the event, she'll take second. Sarah Vietz uh, fell off the lead pace pretty early. She'll take 
third and Vera Koskalainen and struggled with some of those rope climbs. She rounds out heat number four. And that still might be a strong performance for Alexis de Trois. It's the second best score that we've seen thus far for the women. So even though she doesn't get the top one, it's ahead of some of the pre other previous heats as well with only two heats remaining. Event six powered by Reebok for the women, 40 double unders, and then we alternate between two and one reps between the odd and even rounds on those legless rope climbs. Yeah, kind of an interesting way to kind of strategize this workout, obviously having one, the alternating rounds of, of legless rope climb reps. We've seen in the previous heat some of these athletes kind of fall off the pace a little bit in the, the rounds with two reps on the odd rounds, and then kind of pick things back up in the single rep rounds as well. So interesting little wrinkle here that you don't see very often. Fifth of six heats here, and Becca Voigt Miller is one of the women who comes in vying for the invite. Now, she's still on the outside looking in. A long shot, but she's pulled it off before. You know, <laughs> in 2018, it looked like Becca wasn't going to be able to make it back to what would have, would have been her 10th games then. You know what? In that thruster rope climb workout to close out the weekend, she basically pulls off a miracle. And at the time, Meredith Root was on the losing end of that battle, and she completed an epic comeback. Meredith ultimately got a, a backfill invite after drug testing. But, you know, in the very least, this is something that Becca has done before, and she's in familiar territory. Haley Murillo is in lane number nine. She has 298 points. She is more than 60 back of Fisa Gaffey. So she has some work to do here as well. Yeah, but she's really kind of had a strong middle portion of the workout. All top 10 finishes yesterday. Heat number five has begun, and still no woman has been able to complete this event inside that 14-minute time gap. 45 score repetition, still the best score belongs to Evie Hollis. Forty double unders to begin with that Zeus rope, heavier than the normal double under rope, and just thrown out there to be, there to be a bit of a nuisance on these athletes. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, Sean. This is absolutely a nuisance, especially for something like I've said before that is a rhythm movement, especially at these upper echelons of competition. Most of these athletes have their, their own specific rope, their own specific rope length. Uh, and it's to the point now where really they, they find their rhythm with the double unders and they kind of turn their brain off. But now this is just enough of a nuisance to force you to have to think, be able to pull that heavy rope through. And we've seen it start to tax some of these athletes. The two rope climbs here, legless rope climbs in round number one. Again, two in the odd rounds, just one in the even round. Becca Voigt keeping that chalk in the pocket. You would expect that from a veteran of her stature. Yeah, using that little kind of like coin credit card purse in the, in the leggings to also be a good chalk holder. But Becca Voigt is done with two, and she will head back to the jump rope. Not only did she have a, a good you know, ascent up the rope in terms of keeping that technique and rope close, but her descent was beautiful. She immediately hooked her legs, slid down using basically no arms whatsoever. I mean, those are the little, the little veteran moves that save a little bit of energy over the course of, you know, this longer workout. Becca Voigt Miller now in round number two. Steph Chung looking to earn an invite here. We saw her compete at the Filthy 150, and she was pretty impressive at that competition. And she was, and, and I talked to her a little bit, but here right now she's just on the on the kind of edge of the top 10 in 10th. Uh, I spoke to her last night after the competition. She said she's actually really trying to focus on uh, peaking for strength and depth in a couple weeks. She wasn't sure if she was going to come to Mayhem, but decided to kind of on a last minute whim just to get a little bit more competition experience under her belt um, for the coming weeks when she really wants to kind of shine and hopefully try and earn an invite in London. And Haley Murillo and Rebecca Voigt Miller are your leaders right now. Amanda Hardiman and now Steph Chung. All done with their double unders in round two. And Miller's rep is done. 
Haley Murillo is working her way to the top, but starting to slow as she approaches that white tape, inching closer to it, and that rep will count for Murillo. Now, Steph Chung, she's originally from Boston, but she moved to the Middle East in 2014, and she taught pre-medical biology and assisted with human genetics at Will Cornell Medical College in Qatar. Elite fitness and elite intelligence as well. She trained over there for a while. She actually qualified for the games in the Meridian Regional Room when they, they split that yep. uh, off from, from Europe and then decided to move back and now trains once again in Boston. She had one of the really cool comeback stories. Uh, remember we had that kind of grueling chipper workout with the dumbbell box step over. She had a tremendous performance in that workout to really kind of mount a comeback on the final day to earn her, her first individual appearance to the CrossFit Games. A little more than four minutes gone by here, and it's Becca Voigt Miller who is in the lead. She is through 15 of the 55 scored repetitions. She is on her rope climbs now in round number three. She has two to complete. Three hundred twenty-one point seven overall for Becca Voigt Miller coming into this event. Fee Sagafi is the woman who holds the invite. She has three hundred fifty-nine points, so thirty-eight points back of Fee Sagafi is Becca Voigt Miller. But this is an event that can certainly shake up the leaderboard. But Becca Voigt Miller needs to take care of business here in this heat and come up with a strong performance. Forty-five scored repetitions. That's the score to beat. Evie Hollis did that in heat number two as Becca Voigt Miller has one rope climb to go to close out round number three. Amanda Hardiman, who is also vying for that invite, is one spot ahead of Becca Voigt Miller. Hardiman is on the right. Hardiman is 32 points back of Fisagavi. And, and this right here really highlights the two different techniques. You can see Becca keeping the, the rope in close proximity, kind of keeping that close arm angle. Whereas Haley really has to let the arms go to extension and use that hip and kip swing. And you can tell right there, they jumped up on the rope at the same time. Becca's technique much faster if you have the strength to actually hold that technique. Becca Voigt Miller back to the jump rope to begin round number four. Haley Murillo there as well. These are your two leaders. Haley Murillo comes in in ninth place overall. 298 points for her. Becca Voigt Miller continues to look smooth on those double unders. Breaking them up. They'll get one rep for every 10 double unders that they complete. And here in round number four, they will have to complete just one legless rope climb after they complete the 40 double unders. And this heat is actually a little bit behind in terms of pacing compared to that last one. We're just about the halfway mark, and they're not yet through four rounds. We've seen a couple of athletes get, you know, eight rounds and some change. So as of right now, a little bit behind the the top score pace. That was Selena Poppert in the black pants and green top who just failed a rope climb. She is in round number three. Becca Voigt Miller, meanwhile, with one rope climb to complete to get through round four. Back to the jump rope to start round five. So Becca Voigt Miller is ahead of one of the women she is chasing in the standings, and that's Amanda Hardiman. Hardiman on the right of your screen. Hardiman is still in round number four. I mean, beautiful technique there from Becca. Nice and relaxed. Haley Murillo is on to round five as well. And 
McAvoy Miller choosing to break these double unders up into smaller sets. And Steph Chung at the top of your screen in the upper right hand corner. She's in round five as well. Amanda Hardiman over in lane four came in in sixth place overall, trying to chase down Fee Sagafi, but she's got to worry about Becca Boyd Miller right now. And look at the, her hand placement, right? Now, well, not only are her hands extremely far away from her body, that's going to put a little bit more tension on the shoulders, but they're a little bit, a little bit off balance too. You can see her right hand's a little bit higher, a little bit further out. That's actually going to change the angle with which the rope spins. Um, it kind of puts it at kind of this diagonal rotation. It makes it very, very difficult to maintain for larger sets. Uh, and ultimately, it's, you know, when you have that off kind of angle, it's going to cause you to trip up a few times, as we've already seen her in this set. Becca Boyd Miller just hitting her first of two rope climbs here in round number five. Haley Murillo trying to get her first in this round. Mario and Re Rebecca Voigt Miller tied at 27 scored reps right now. You know, we talk about the difference between their two techniques, but props to Marilla for, at least up to this point, being able to hang tough with Becca Voigt Miller despite looking a little bit less efficient on these legless rope climbs so far. I mean, you can look at the difference in demeanor and the body language there. Becca looking calm, cool, and collected, and Haley Marilla bent over. Trying to catch her breath. Rebecca Voigt Miller is now through five rounds, moving on to round six. Four minutes to go in the event as Haley Murillo is also now through round five. Amanda Hardiman is chalking up her hands. She's trying to close out round five. Rebecca Voigt Miller is your leader here in the fifth of six heats for the women. And now Amanda Hardiman trying to get up the rope for the first of two times here in round number five. Steph Chung has just completed round five. So she's starting to push Haley Murillo for second place in this heat. Chung on the right side of your screen. Only one legless rope climb to complete here in round number six as we alternate between two legless rope climbs in the odd rounds, one in the even. But they'll always complete 40 double unders and Becca Voigt going to the chalk. I mean, just going off body language, Becca looks very calm and in control. With about three minutes left, especially given her placement on the leaderboard, I'd like to see her maybe push the pace a little bit. Maybe if not on the, the legless uh, rope climbs, but maybe on these double under, because she was taking three to four breaks for each one of those sets. And Becca Voigt Miller in seventh place overall with 321 points trails Fisa Goffey by 38. And Fisa Goffey will be going in the next heat. Becca Voigt Miller is now done with six rounds. Moving on to round seven. As Haley Murillo is trying to get herself to the top of the rope here and join Rebecca Voigt Miller in round number six. She's almost using two different kips there. One really big one when she's reaching with her left hand and then a small one just to kind of get her right hand back on top. A Little bit different technique, but it works for her. She gets through those legless rope climbs. So less than two minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Becca Voigt Miller is working on her double unders in round number seven. Steph Chung with this rep We'll also move on to round number seven. 45, that's the score to beat. Evie Hollis, she's had that since the second heat. At 36, 37 make that rep. Becca Boyd Miller will move on to the rope. She'll have two rope climbs complete here in round number seven. About a minute 15 to go. But the good news for Becca Voigt Miller is she is ahead of Amanda Hardiman. So she will pick up points on Hardiman. She only trails her by six points. 
She tries to reel in Fee Sagafi, who right now holds the invite to the CrossFit Games. Becca Voigt Miller looking for her 13th appearance at the CrossFit Games. So 10 as an individual, two as a master. She earns an invite here 13th time. I mean, it's almost unheard of, despite the fact, you know, that you have someone in a similar situation and Ben Smith on the other side, but really kind of the uh, the, the iron, man, iron men and women, if you will, of the sport. Rebecca Voigt Miller now with 15 seconds to go, working her way up, trying to close out round number seven. And still great technique, at least up into that point. Let's see if she can transition and using that kip a little bit more. And she will get it, but she will not have time to get back to the rope. But she will beat Amanda Hardiman by six reps. Now remember, no one has finished this event inside the time cap. So there are a lot of women that could get in between the two of them. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to see what happens now with Fee Sagafi in the final heat. And Allison Stahl, also a woman who's in contention as well. And, and I think, you know, even though we saw her breaking up the double unders there, I think this was a situation where Rebecca Voigt's pacing really allowed her to maximize her score here despite, and her knowing that she was going to struggle with some of those legless rope climbs towards the end. You know, she maintained good technique throughout, but the last couple of rope climbs she started to struggle. She was still able to finish uh, at the top of the heat, and 39 reps for Beck, uh, Becca Voigt Miller is still going to be a pretty strong score. It's the third best time it ties Serena Ruggiero from the, an earlier heat. Um, and hopefully she'll pick up some points depending on how Spee Sagafi does in this next one. So one rep for every year for Becca Voigt Miller as she <laughs> wins that heat. 39 years old competing here at the Mayhem Classic. Haley Murillo just one rep back of her, as was Steph Chung. Uh, Amanda Hardiman with 33 and Selena Poppert can't get through three rounds. Rory McKernan is on the competition floor with Becca Voigt Miller. Becca, it looks like in that heat, there's there's a lot of camaraderie. You guys are having a lot of fun. Tell me about your experience so far here at the Mayhem Classic. Man, the Mayhem Classic has been awesome from volunteers to judges to coordinators. It's been really great, very friendly. The floor feels like old school, like regional style. So I've been really enjoying it. We were talking back in the warm-up area about the programming in particular and how it's, it's kind of sneaky, right? How is your body feeling and how are you holding up? I'm doing really well. I'm very excited with my training and, you know, I had to be strategic on this workout just because I knew my grip was going to go. So it's all about strategy when it comes to rich froning workouts. Absolutely. And uh, let's talk looking forward goals for this weekend and for the rest of the season. What are they for you? Um, just like every year, I'm going to charge hard for the rest of the weekend and the rest of the year and hopefully get a qualifying spot either for individual or masters and have some fun at the games. Thanks for letting us be a part of it. Ladies and gentlemen, Becca Voigt. So Becca Voigt Miller trying to pull off another epic comeback here on the final day of competition as we are ready for the final heat for the women. And lane number one is Fee Sagafi, and she's the woman wearing the big target on her back right now. She currently holds the invite to the CrossFit Games, fourth overall with 359 points. And she's got her work cut out for her here. She still has the 30 point. Uh, cushion over Allison Stahl, but seeing Becca Voigt Miller, who's right behind Stahl and Hardeman, uh, do well in that last heat certainly puts a little bit of pressure. Also, knowing that you have some athletes in your heat like uh, Christy Aramo O'Connell and Tia Claire Toomey, who should do well in this particular event as well. The final heat, we'll see if Tia Toomey can be one of the first women to finish this event inside that 14-minute time cap. She's running away with first place. The battle for second place is taking place right next to her, Danielle Brandon, who will be coming into view on the right of your screen, will be battling with Chrissy Aramo O'Connell, who is in the left center of your screen. They right now occupy the spots on the podium, but they are very close to one another in the standings has just nine points to separate O'Connell from Brandon for second place. And Tia Toomey is done with her first 40 double unders and on to her first two legless rope climbs. And if Brandon can outduel O'Connell here um, and take over second place, that would be extremely impressive. O'Connell, one of her past sport backgrounds is in rock climbing, so grip is definitely one of the strengths for her. This would be an impressive performance, especially for Danielle Brandon to be able to kind of pick up some points and move up the leaderboard here. Tia Toomey making quick work of those two rope lines. Fee Sagafi working her way up. The 
Latia Toomey in first. Danielle Brandon, who has kind of making a habit in this competition of just sticking around Tia Toomey. Even if she's not going to catch Tia in a particular workout, having her as kind of uh, the person to pace off certainly helps the performance overall. And we've seen her put together some impressive performances, especially in day number two. And Tia Toomey now through round number two in less than two minutes. Wow. She will begin round three. The uh, I guarantee you Tia was probably watching those previous heats and kind of, and she, what I think she is really good for Tia is she's really good about finding little personal challenges for herself in the midst of a competition. Even though she's 85 points clear of the rest of the field, she takes the fact that no one's finished as a little bit of a personal challenge to kind of motivate her individually for this workout. And I guarantee you that's what's running through her head right now is be the first to finish uh, and really set the tone for the, for the rest of the competition. Tia Toomey in round number three, she will have two rope climbs to complete here. Two rope climbs in the odd rounds, one in the even round. 55 total scored repetitions. 45 is the best score. Evie Hollis did that way back in heat number two. This is the sixth and final heat of event six for the women. We will have the final heat for the men coming up after this. And this is a this is round three, the kind of pace to finish based on a minute 24 per round would be 412. She's a minute, a minute 20, almost a minute 30 ahead of that pace. So right now she's well below the pace needed to finish this workout. So Tia Toomey is on to round four. Danielle Brandon has two rope climbs to close out round three. But the good news for her is she is ahead right now of Chrissy Aramo O'Connell. Top three spots pay out pretty well. $15,000 for the winner, $10,000 for second, $5,000 for third. So Danielle Brandon looking for a healthy payday here. If she can get ahead of Chrissy Aramo O'Connell. Aramo O'Connell on the left of your screen completing her first of two rope climbs in this round as Tia Toomey works her way back to the rope. Toomey looking to close out round number four. And just to go, goes to show you how impressive this performance is so far. Both Brandon and Aramo O'Connell are ahead of that pace to finish underneath the time cap. And Tia's a full round clear of them. As the battle of the podium goes on in the middle of the floor, the battle for the invite is on the outside. Fee Sagafi is trying to hold off Allison Stahl. Allison Stahl is on the right. Now, Fee Sagafi has just completed her 17th rep. That means she is through three rounds. Stahl on the right is struggling. She has yet to complete round number two. So this is good news not only for Sagafi, but also Becca Voigt Miller. Yeah, for Sagafi, obviously she's, you know, right now she's concerned with Allison Stahl, who is her closest competitor. And also knowing that Amanda Hardiman struggled in that previous heat, you know, should give her a little bit of confidence in terms of creating a cushion. But right now, Becca Voigt-Miller has to be happy with what she's seeing, at least in terms of trying to chip away at the leaderboard and who's in front of her. There were two women in front of... Becca Voigt Miller coming into this event. Hardiman was one. That was in the last heat. Becca Voigt Miller beat her. Allison Stahl is the other, and she is struggling here on these rope climbs. You know, Stahl obviously trying to catch Sagafi, but she still has to, you know, hold off the people behind her. She was only eight points clear of Becca Voigt Miller coming into this, and right now she's already hit failure, and she's only three rounds in. And this could be disaster for her in terms of her overall standings. And remember, Becca Voigt Miller had a score of 39. So that's really the mark that Fisa Gaffey needs to be thinking about right now. Tia Toomey, meanwhile, is into round six. Danielle Brandon is in second place. She is in round at number five. And Christy Aramo O'Connell also in round five. Fisa Gaffey. is in round number five as well. Tia Toomey just blitzing through this workout. She is now through six rounds. She's on to round number seven. We're not even halfway through here. And she's averaging a minute around. I mean, 
She is absolutely demolishing this workout. Tia Toomey is moving so quickly that I'm having trouble keeping track of where she is. <laughs> I mean, I look down at my scorecard and it changes like two rounds every time we put her on screen. I mean, that's just a testament to the fitness level that she's built, and especially coming off of last year where she had the most dominant individual uh, performance at the CrossFit Games on the women's side. It's it's It really is a sight to see someone just at peak performance and, you know, at the height of their career. So she has one rep to go to finish up round number seven. And we have just now hit the halfway point. Ten total rounds in this event. 55 total scored reps. Now Allison Stahl is trying to get herself to the top of the rope and just cannot make it. She's on the right. She is stuck in round number two. And any chance that she has right now of earning that invite is quickly slipping through her fingertips. And that no rep is as heartbreaking as they come. She was literally maybe an inch to two inches away from touching that tape line. All she had to do was get her other hand on top, directly on top, and she would have got it, and she just couldn't make it. She was at the absolute limits of her capacity, and it's just it's tough to see, especially for a competitor who's really pouring her heart out. Fee Sagafi came into this event with a 30-point lead over Allison Stahl, and that's going to widen. The problem is Rebecca Voigt Miller put up a score of 39 in the prior heat. Now Fee Sagafi's got to at least catch that to not surrender any ground to Becca Voigt Miller. And right now she's more than on pace to do that, and. I mean, this is, this is pretty cool for Fee on, on, on two levels. Obviously, she is, you know, on the cusp of earning an invite. But you look at the women, you look at the women that are on the left of her, you know, a CrossFit Games champion in Tia Toomey, a multi-year top 10 finisher at the Games, and Christy Aramo O'Connell, a, a top 10 finisher last year and really one of the emerging athletes on the women's side in Danielle Brandon. And she's hanging tough with all of them. That's Tia Toomey, meanwhile, is in round number nine. She's right in the middle of your screen. I feel like every time we, we mention her, it's only a minute, but she's through two, two more rounds. Danielle Brandon is in second place. She's through 38 of the, of the 55 total score repetitions, so she's getting set to close out round six. Chrissy Aramo O'Connell, she is in round seven. Danielle Brandon, I'm sorry, getting ready to close out round seven, I should say. So the good news for Brandon is, is that depending on what happens here, Brandon could find herself in second place overall after this event. She only trailed Chrissy Aramo O'Connell by nine points coming into this event. Well, and the tough part for Brandon, especially, you know, she started day two with a little bit of a hole because of the, tra the, the trail run and ruck. And she has beaten Aramo O'Connell in every single workout since. The problem is that she needs athletes to kind of fit in between them to kind of drive that point spread between them a little bit larger. And so far, that just hasn't happened. So even though she's looking like she's going to get a second place finish in this workout, Chrissy Irma O'Connell might take third, which means she's only picking up five points. And right now, this point spread between them is nine. So even despite beating her in four consecutive workouts, she could still go into that final workout, which we don't know yet, behind her. Fisa Gaffi, meanwhile, on the left of your screen, is through 36 of the... 55 total scored repetitions. 39 is the number she needs to worry about because that was a score that Becca Voigt Miller put up. And she basically has four minutes to complete two rope climbs in order to do that. Tia Toomey is in her final round and barely looks winded. Just another walk in the park for the champ. I mean, th these are one of those ones that just kind of like reset the game board, right? This type of performance in an event that no one has finished so far. And really, no one has gotten into a good, por significant portion of the final round. Tia is going to finish with more than three minutes to spare. And Tia Toomey confirming with her judge one more. And Tia Toomey demolishes event number six. 1045.89, her fourth win, fifth win of this competition. She only has one second place finish. I mean, by all intents and purposes, this is pretty much a perfect performance from her this weekend. If you want to know what it's going to take to beat Tia Toomey, watch this, because 
she is taking things to a new level as far as dominance is concerned on the women's side of the competition. Now, Danielle Brandon is in second. She is through 49 of the 55 total scored reps. And she's already got second place in this workout locked up. This is the second best score that we've seen. And now she has a separate goal just to get underneath that time cap for a little bit of a confidence boost. And you can see the respect from Tia Toomey for the effort that she's put forth, you know, taking some time to come and root her on and give her a little bit of a push through this workout. Fisa Goffey, as we watch Chrissy Aramo O'Connell get to the top of her rope climb to finish up round number eight is past the score that Becca Voigt Miller put up. So that is great news for Fisa Gaffey as far as that invite is concerned. Allison Stahl is trying to get the road climb finished and she will do it and she is now through two rounds. She has been struggling with that for this entire event. So a moral victory for Allison Stahl right there. Danielle Brandon has one rope climb to go, and she will be the second woman to complete this event. And you could see, you could hear the crowd just go nuts for Allison Stahl. You know, that shared experience of knowing what it's like to get to the, <laughs> the very end of your rope, pun intended, and come up short and be able to kind of rally. Danielle Brandon will finish second. She will lock up 95 points. And if you were wondering if last year's performance of the games was a fluke, I think she has answered that question here. And she has answered that emphatically. If you had no clue that Tia was competing and you didn't get to see that one, this would be impressive on its own level by finishing but with more than a minute. Chrissy Aramo O'Connell through 48 of the 55 total scored repetitions. Two rope climbs here to finish up round number nine. And now 45 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. Fee Sagafi is through 45 reps. Now remember, the top score coming into this event was 45, now 46. So Sagafi is in line for a top five finish in this event. That is huge for her as she looks to lock up that invite to the CrossFit Games. She's putting distance between her and the rest of the field as, as far as the invite is concerned. Now, Allison Stahl is back on the rope where she has been struggling for this entire event. She's being coached by Tia Toomey a little bit, but Stahl's grip is just gone. The final seconds here, but Fisa Gaffey does not win the heat, but she is winning the bigger war when it, it is concerned of, when you talk about the invite to the CrossFit Games. Tremendous performance for her exactly when she needed it. But Tia Toomey wins for the fifth time in six events, and she's still coaching Allison Stahl. Just a tremendous competitor and a tremendous ambassador for this sport. I mean, you can tell she just eats, sleeps, and breathes this sport, and is a competitor through and through, not just for her own sake, you know, obviously blowing away the rest of the field there, but then, like you said, turning around and trying to help out her fellow competitors and even, you know, trying to share a few tips with Allison Stahl at the end. Tia Toomey and Danielle Brandon. We've seen this battle throughout the weekend, but Toomey gets the best of it here. She and Brandon, the only two women to finish this event inside that 14 minute time cap. And Tia Toomey just blazed through those 10 rounds. Danielle Brandon, if it hadn't been for Tia Toomey's performance, that would have been the one we were talking about. But Tia Toomey wins again, and she gets the honor of speaking with Maureen McCurdy. I was actually sitting with Shane as you were competing. It looked to me as if you were looking over at the clock. He said there wasn't a strategy except to think about the effort and, and trying to push yourself a little bit. But was there a strategy and what, and what was that? Um, well, going out onto the floor, the strategy was just to go. But then once I was able to maintain my lead, I did kind of dial it back just a little, just to ensure that when it came to these back rounds, uh, I wasn't going to be failing any reps. And um, I guess just staying underneath that threshold limit. In, in the overall standings and then in the events themselves, when you're that far ahead, how do you find the motivation to keep on pushing yourself? Uh, the, the girls that I'm competing against, you know, it, it doesn't matter what workout or what placing I am at, the fact that I'm able to come out on this field and compete against such incredible athletes, that's motivating in itself and um, I'm just grateful to be here. You're, you're very modest and very gracious, but in this kind of a weekend, is it training or is it competing? 
I think it's um, a great way to obviously um, be in a competition environment and just learn so much about yourself um, leading into you know the, the season ahead. So um, I go into Mayhem Classic like I would for Waterpalooza, for Rogue, and then hopefully all that practice that I've had at these competitions um, can really benefit me at the CrossFit Games. Thank you, Tia. Ladies and gentlemen, Tia Claire Toomey.